Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> I actually wasn't going to make a video until um, we got all moved in and everything was uh, cool, you know, and the office was all pretty and all this other stuff, but um, I've been kind of watching these uh, science and faith um, midrash discussions and stuff. And um, I kind of wanted to put my two cents in because I don't have anything to do right now because I'm waiting to pick up my car. Um, there will be a video coming where me and Zoe um, bitch for probably about an hour about how this week's gone. Um, it's been crazy. But um, about this, like, um, I first want to say, like, I was not raised in the church. Um, my grandmother um, went to a Dutch Reform church, and um, the I think that's where a lot of the guilt um, soul crushing guilt from my family comes from, from my grandmother. Um, on my dad's side, um, my grandmother married a minister. When they lived in La Habra, he was the minister of an, a church there. But for some reason, we never went. And I don't even think my grandma went. It was really weird. And then after they moved from La Habra, um, he was kind of like a traveling minister. Um, he would just, like, go. They were living in Central California at the time in a little town called Tulare. And um, he would just drive up and down 99 on Sundays and go speak at churches and stuff. Most people who are raised with people who believe in God, um, you end up doing a lot of things like praying. <clears throat> and so um, I prayed every night that, and this is exactly how it was, I would say, Dear God, I pray there's not an earthquake tonight tomorrow or the next night and then the next night I would pray God I hope there's not an earthquake tonight tomorrow or the next night and I thought if I like tripled it that um, and I did it every night that there was no way God would allow there to be an earthquake that was basically the extent of my religion and on Easter Sunday, at the crack of shoot, we would go um, to sunrise service. Then my mom married this dude who um, was a Catholic, um, but he only went to church on um, midnight mass on Christmas and Easter. So that was the extent of everything. And then, like... Um, a lot of people, um, I ended up finding God myself through um, kind of getting into trouble. Um, and I don't want to say hitting rock bottom or anything like that because I don't think it was ever that bad. But um, there were times when I was really scared of what was going to happen next, basically. And, um, so I ended up getting into, like, a non-denominational church, and it was funny, because when I did that, my family was, even though they, they raised me to believe in God and country and all this other stuff, when I started going to church, they were really upset. Um, not upset, upset, but, like, they thought I was going too far in. And I really thought when I was in high school at this time, because I had already done a lot of living and I was ready to not do that anymore. And um, 
I really thought like my future, my life was going to be a part of the church. And so I started getting more involved uh, behind the scenes. And um, I just noticed how ugly it was. Now, before I go any further, I know not every church is the same. I know different denominations do different things. But for me, I went to, like, I was like a church hopper because, like, I didn't want to be left to my own devices um, any night of the week. So every night I was going to, like, a different church's youth group or something. And um, so I was around a lot of different churches. And... One of the things that really bothered me was when you questioned anything. Like, if you were like, oh, well, if that's like this, why is this like that? Um, and I don't know if it was a thing where, like, they couldn't answer the question, so they just would go this route to kind of shut you up. But it was like, oh, are you okay? Have you fallen? Are you backsliding? Like, why, why do you have these doubts? Doubts are of the devil. And I'm like, it's not a doubt. I'm asking you a freaking question, you know? Like, like how does this work? Like, how, how does this make sense? You know, explain this to me. And so I was just, like, studying the Bible. Study, 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 study. And I was going to go to Bible college. And then I was studying the origins of the Bible. And... It seemed like the more you learned about it, the more questions you had. Like when you look at the actual formation of the Bible, it's um, really strange and it raises a lot of questions. And I think for those people who are believers, this is when your faith really has to kick in because like the final outcome is like if you're like well how did this not get like screwed up by humans over all these years you know and the answer is well well why would god let stupid people like dirty up his word don't you think god's powerful enough to keep idiots from making the Bible incorrect and stuff. And if you believe in God and you believe in the power of God, then that argument holds a lot of water, you know? But as someone who just wants to know, like, that argument sucks, you know? Um, and then what started happening, with me at least, was the legalism that different churches and different denominations had were driving me crazy. Like, and f for those of you unfamiliar, and I'm probably going to explain this wrong, but legalism is putting rules and laws on something that already has rules and laws. Okay. So, like, and someone in the comments, if I, like, fucked up that definition, I'm sure there were, like, um, but so, for instance, like, <clears throat> one of the things that drove my, that just drove me absolutely crazy all the time, and my mom would always say this, like, if me and my sister's room was dirty, she would go, cleanliness is next to godliness, and cleanliness is next to godliness, and it was just like this, like, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. And um, then, like, when I was studying the Bible, I, like, read the whole Bible, and I'm like, that wasn't in there. I didn't read that anywhere. And, like, um, I would, like, get, like, those, like, like Bible indexes or whatever and try to find stuff. And I'm like, dude, my mom just totally fucking made that up. Um, and that's, like, a small version of it. But then there's other versions where, like, different denominations have their rules. And, like, one of the biggest things that 
I had problems with, with like friends and people I cared about was speaking in tongues because, um, like I believe that the, if you want to look at the Bible as like infallible, if the Bible says, when you speak in tongues, I think it's in Corinthians, it like lays out like how this is supposed to go. If you're going to speak in tongues, you need to have an interpreter there or else it's just like, like words falling on deaf ears. And in the book of Acts, I believe the tongues they were speaking, um, weren't like the, it was like, I don't know how to speak Arabic, but now I'm here and I'm trying to preach the word of God. And now I know how to speak Arabic and I could explain it to these people. And then, um, so that was the one way of it. And then the angelic tongues would, you would need the interpreter or whatever. And you would go to these church meetings and there's just like, it was just chaos, like people shouting and yelling and no one was making any sense. <clears throat> and then this girl I started dating, um, she was going to a church like that. And I thought she was like the sanest person I ever met. And she was doing that. And I was like, what? And it just like, it. and some of you watching this might be like, well, I do that and it's cool. And that's fine. I've just never found any evidence in the Bible to support it. But if it makes you feel good, fucking do it. Who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? And why are you watching this channel anyway? I cuss a lot. Um, <clears throat> but so there's that. And then um, just like little things would always piss me off. And there were so many denominations and so many people saying this is right and this isn't. And then... Like, we would go, there was this one church, I can't remember what it was called, but it was in my neighborhood, actually, and they had bought houses in the neighborhood. And there was one house that was the brother's house, and one house that was the sister's house. What a day, what a day, what a day. Um, so, yeah, um, the car was ready, and so I went to go pick the car up. Um, so, if I recall... I was talking about this um, church group that had the brother's house and the sister's house. And what they would do is as soon as a kid turned 14 and started high school, they would um, take the kid out of the home with the parents and have them be in a house owned by the church that had a bunch of other teenage boys and, um, like, a church leader. And we, and that was, like, right down the street. And some people I went to school with lived there and stuff. And then, like, there were some Jehovah's Witnesses we knew. And, um since then I've had a lot of dealings with that church, um, through family members. And, um, but even like in high school, like, um, Mormons and stuff, like for some reason where I lived, all of the, um, super hot girls were Mormon and the Mormons would have these Mormon dances to try to, get people um, together so they could start their holy mission and all this other stuff. And I'm probably saying this all wrong and I'm not trying to be like shitty or funny about it. But me and my friends used to go to the bishop and get interviewed about our interest in the Mormon church just so we could go to these Mormon dances with all of the cute Mormon girls. And um, I don't know if they still do that now. They might. But um, the point of the story is, is that you have all of these different groups that say they read 
the same scripture, the same word of God. But they seem to all be like, not at each other's throats, but they'll say like, oh, well, your version of Christianity is the wrong one. And um, you might go to hell, you might not. I don't know, you know. Um, and then you have other people who are like, yeah, you are going to go to hell. And I know we're not talking about religion, we're talking about faith, and we're talking about science. But just to bring this into this, is that I always have felt like um, Christians, and this is coming from me too when I was in the church and working with the church, but the Christians, at least in America, because for the majority, that's all I really know, um, are some of the most un christ like people I've ever met. And there's parts of me that are like, you know, like churches are good for the masses because people really like it and it makes them feel better. And if it's not hurting anybody, then it's fine. And, you know, the Bible says that teachers will be judged more harshly anyway. So even if there's a good church with a bad leader, um, God will take care of all that stuff. But now, um, I just, I just don't know. And the older I get, the more I realize that, like, free thought, free speech, all of these things are not acceptable. And um, the second you question anything, um, you are a pariah and an outcast. And that is not a very good way to go about stuff. And I know people are going to go, well, you know what, you know what Paul said, you know what Paul said? And yeah, I know what Paul said. Um, again, I think a lot of this is taken out of context when the majority of the new Testament is letters that people wrote to churches that were undergoing certain problems. Um, a lot of that stuff, I believe, is a case-by-case -case thing. And if you were to... I, I don't know, just the idea of how the books were chosen for the New Testament is troubling. But, like, if I were to take this book here, Bukowski Selected Letters, okay? These are letters Bukowski wrote to people. Now, does that mean, um, in reading that, whatever he says in there is the end-all be-all on any kind of writing? Because Bukowski wrote it in a letter? No. And some of you are like, oh, what a heathen. He's like having issues with the word of God and blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, is that when all the books of the Bible were written, especially the letters, um, Paul and Peter and James and Timothy and all these other folks that wrote these letters had no idea that these letters would be in the world's best-selling book and looked at as um, gospel don't mind the pun. But anyway, so just the older I get, I just, I feel the thing that's holding society back is religion. And um, a lot of it is because of, like, there just needs to be, like, peace, you know? Like, Whenever there are groups that tell you what you can and cannot do, like they're doing that for power, for to control you, but when you don't do what they say, even though there isn't necessarily a law against it, this organization can come after you, can make your life a living hell and all this other stuff. And that's not okay. And um, 
I don't know, like there is so much about this that troubles me um, beyond belief because the reason why most people turn to religion is because they're extremely vulnerable and they're in a bind and um, whatever the situation might be, it might be like a life or death thing, whether it's by their own hand or somebody else's. And the church comes in and it's like, it's okay, don't worry about it, it's okay. And then that person feels better and that's good. But I feel like what happens after that um, is kind of like manipulation in a sense. And for people who have been brought up in the church, and the church has always been a part of your life, um, it's really hard to think like about life without the church. You know, it's probably really scary for a lot of people but um i just see like especially after the last year um there are so many things that aren't right you have to be able to see it and i know some people will go well you know there's just a lot of bad apples but that's okay well you only need one hole in a boat to sink it and, um, yeah, if you want more analogies, like a chain is only as strong as it, as its weakest link, you know, um, it's just bad. Now the science side of things, I have very borderline views on this. What... I don't like, and it's funny because Steve did a video that talked a little bit about this so long ago, and I can't remember what it, like the video was called or what it was about, but he said something, maybe it wasn't that long ago, it seems like a long time ago, but he was saying something like people say um, belief in science is just as much of a faith as a belief in God. <laughs> <clears throat> and Steve's like, no, that's not true. And, um, it, like, when this argument's going to come up, it's going to come down to semantics. Like, definitely. Like, because to me, like, the word science is you studying something, analyzing something, um, hypothesizing. And when you hypothesize, you're hypothesizing your theory. So science in and of itself is like, it's a scope of a lot of things. But the thing that keeps coming up in it is that it's trying to prove a theory. Because unless you just um, like watch stuff, and then write down what you see. Um, but when you're doing experiments, you usually have to have some kind of thought in mind, like, well, I think this is going to happen if I do this. And so you take your theory and you put it to the test. And so in doing that, like, I could see where... Some people would say that science is just another faith system. And um, I think I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. I don't know, because I could see both sides of it, but it's just arguing words. Okay, let me say it like this. This is crazy. And I don't know what this is. Like, I don't know if this is like an agnostic thing or um, an atheism thing, but... It's really hard for me to think that humans came from nothing and that humans with um, a conscious mind came from nothing when no other creature really has 
a conscience, if you know what I mean. So that's weird. Now, I'm not saying it's God. I'm not saying it's anything. Well, well, since I can't prove that there wasn't a creator, I can't disprove there was a creator. You know what I'm saying? So all of this is just like pissing into the wind. Like it doesn't matter either way. But for me personally, um, whether it was like a, I created you on my day off and now I'm going to go to another galaxy, whatever, or um, anything. Like, I, I, I don't understand. I don't know why, but um, I'm not putting it past anything. But to think that, I know a lot of people go, well, to think of all the planets and all the stars out there, to think that we're the only ones is crazy to assume that. Well, I think it's crazy to think that out of all the different creatures on the earth, that we are the only ones that have, like, a conscience. That we're the only ones that have thoughts about the things we do. We are the only creatures that um, do not... We're the only cre creatures that use reason on this whole planet. That is bizarre. And if anybody leaves a comment going, well, there's that dog that pushes buttons that says it wants a treat and stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about like animals can be trained to do something. People do things and then have thoughts about them after they do them. Like, oh, should I have done that? Oh, man, that's weird. I feel kind of like a tugging in my heart right now, you know, gosh, oh man, like, um, I don't think there's really any other creature that does that. I don't think there's, um, creatures that contemplate their death, you know, um, and if you want to prove me wrong, you know, like light it up in the comments, but anyway. So, um, there's that. My other thing is, is that I don't understand how natural selection can work in theory if some of the things that um, we have evolved from or whatnot can still exist. Like, to me, that defeats the object of it. And, um, I don't understand that. And, um, uh, if I have my facts mixed up, you know, just please let me know. But like, I've just never been able to like, okay, so there was some sort of being in between this being and this being that we've never been able to find, but we assume that it exists because of this, 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 and that boggles my mind. Like if we came from apes, like, how come all of the people in between apes and man have disappeared, but apes are still there? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I think if something is supposed to take over and be better, then the rest of it should be gone. And um, so that's my thought on that. Now, um... The final thing I'm going to talk about here, um, this might get a little far out, um, but I really want you guys to hear me out on this because this is way personal. Um, I may have talked about it before, um, but I know I haven't talked about it in this much detail. The first like novel I wrote, I wrote it and... I became like a omnipresent narrator that no one in the book knew I existed. And the reason why I did it like this is because it was originally a screenplay and I was trying to get funding for it forever and it never happened. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll just write a book. So a lot of like my direction and stuff like that, um, 
was used by the narrator. And so it made this like cool little fun thing in the book. And then when I wrote the second book, um, my characters in the book like started to know something was up. So as the narrator, I would tell them to do something basically, or say they were going to do something. And then the characters in the story would deliberately disobey me. Okay, so it already sounds weird and kind of hard to read. But that was the thing. And as the book was going on, it was getting like worse and worse to the point where one of the characters actually saw me. And um, it was like kind of like what the hell's going on here. So then I was supposed to write a third book. And um, when I started out, like, outlining it, I'm like, okay, well, at the end of the book, I'm going to meet the main character, and I'm going to tell the main character, like, what's been going on and everything. And then I was like, well, what if he, like, pulls a gun on me and shoots me in the book? <laughs> Like, would something happen to me here? Like, and I just, like, started, like, freaking out. And this is when all of you guys were like, okay, call the madhouse. Um, but I totally freaked out. And I've tried writing the book um, a bunch of times since, like, 2008. And I've just, uh, I just can't do it. It freaks me out. I don't want to do it. And the theory there is, is that as a creator, I created a universe where these characters exist and take place. Now, if the characters in the book I created have any kind of will or agency or anything like that, and even if they don't, like... How can I prove that the world they live in is any less real than the world that I live in? You know, like, um, we could be people in a writer's book, and whenever something happens or whatnot. Like, and the writer has to, like, get up and take his kids to school. Like, we just freeze. And then we come back on when the writer decides to come back and continue where he left off. And all the little deja vu moments people have, that might be just, like, a thing where um, there was, like, an outline written. And, like we start doing the thing that the outline already said that we were going to do. So there's this like, like moment, you know, where the creator created two separate things that say the same thing, you know? And then again, we come to the point of if you can't prove that that's not the way it is, then you can't disprove it. Like you could say, like, and I'm talking to you, Steve Donahue, you could say, oh, well, that's crazy and bullcrap. Okay, cool. You didn't disprove anything. You just said what you think. But you can't prove that worlds that people have created don't exist in their own little pocket of time or on a different plane of existence, you know, like there is no way to know that things aren't real, if this makes any sense. So, um, now whether this is science or this is, um, religion or this is, um, a pulp writer trying to make a couple more bucks, like, it's how it is, you know, like none of this stuff can be proven or disproven. 
So again, it's just like pissing in the wind. But this brings me to my next point. The next point is, is that back in 98, I started making up these characters in this world. And um, they were different. And every time I've tried to write these characters into something, every time, I've tried many different mediums with these guys and have done all of these things. And I, it just nothing ever works. But I know all of the history. I know all of the... Um, lineage of all this stuff that even if I ever were to write a book about it would probably never even end up in the book about it. So um, the other night I was actually thinking about it and I'm like, what if these characters I've created are just as much of gods and deities and whatever, as any other religion that's ever been created, you know? Like, most religions start because some godlike entity comes and says, like, these are my words, write them down, blah, 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 blah. Um, so who's to say that, you know... 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, whatever. Um, and I'm not just picking on Christianity here. I'm picking on anything. Who's to say that these religions weren't just some creative person who kept having these visions of these characters and didn't know who the hell they were? And then the characters told them that they were gods and they needed to tell the world about them because like anyone could have done that, you know, um, <clears throat> the deities that I've written about in my head and in outlines and all this other crap could be as real as other gods and other cultures and other religions. Like we always take, like, even if you don't believe it, like, even if you don't believe, like, what's the Mormon thing? Um, Abraham came to Joseph Smith or Brigham Young, I can't remember which one, and said, oh, hey, I know um, we have these, these gold um, tablets. We need you to go get them and carry them somewhere. Like, maybe he was just writing a play, writing a book, or you know, Muhammad or, um, whatever, like pick a religion and just throw a name in there. And maybe the person who wrote that down was just a really creative person who couldn't get this being out of their head and whatever and whatever. So if all of this is true, okay, <clears throat> that means we're going into the realm of the power of thought and the power of prayer and all of this stuff. Does this mean that you can make up your own deity, pray to it, and when good things happen, attribute credit for that good thing to the deity that you made up? And then if you create a deity, does that make you the creator? Like, are you the god's god? Is, is any of this making any sense? Like, this is why... Um, thinking about this stuff just opens up so many doors and so many windows, but closes none. And whenever anyone who starts talking about stuff like this starts talking in absolutes, like everything's lost. Like there is no conversation anymore. There is no debate. There is no nothing because unless both sides are willing to hear things and be enlightened, 
then there is no conversation. It's just this person shouts at this person, and this person shouts at this person, and they're both hoping that the other one will finally break. Like, honestly, I know no one who came to, like, religion or faith or even science for that matter, just because someone beat it into them until they broke. So if that's your way of witnessing or whatever, you're doing it wrong. Like, that does not work. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you all think about this. Um, because, to be honest, the only observation I have on the views I have expressed here come from my therapist, and they weren't great. So, with that said, um, let me know down below what you think, and um, let me know if you want to start a religion, like if you pray to a fake deity, like, or if you just like, like WordPress, word processor of the gods, like you just type on the computer, like your prayers or wishes, and then things happen. Um, you know, like, who's to say? Um, so anyway, I'm out of here. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but I think I broke my brain. So I'm going to go.